Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Matteo, and I'm going to explain to you a little bit our vision on AI-centric uh, database systems today. Um, so as we all know, AI is growing, and it's growing really fast. So I'm not going to kind of bother you on all the set of charts showing the latest and greatest trends of machine learning and, that, and the impact that, uh, that in general having. But what I want to focus on is more kind of what is happening on the application side. So uh, we're starting to see new class of application uh, popping up that leverage uh, machine learning. So example of these are um, like a smart agriculture, bin analytics, uh, brand recognitions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and of course, these new uh, class of applications, uh, they're also having an impact on the database uh, themselves, right? So uh, we're starting to see kind of uh, support, uh, for instance, like uh, um, uh, BigQuery lately has uh, added support for uh, structured data. They use machine learning to basically read the structured data from the uh, from the lake house. Um, other example are kind of, there are a bunch of startups that start to explore this data as well, such as video analytics, uh, vector search, or even active loop uh, later on. It, uh, I think they have, a, they have a talk uh, after me about uh, like a deep lake and what they're going to do. So um, uh, what I'm going to explain to me is kind of, uh, explain to you basically is uh, uh, kind of a little bit what, what is happening in this next generation uh, uh, data-driven uh, application um, and what makes them uh, different than what we had before. So in my opinion, these are kind of three of the main aspects that make them a little bit different. So uh, support for multimodal data, so image, uh, videos, uh, relational as well, um, tight integration and interoperability with uh, machine learning. And of course, you want to have performance since you are uh, uh, reading images and video, you also need to have hardware acceleration and so on. Um, our claim is that building uh, such a system is, uh, is actually quite hard. And the reason are the following. So um, uh, starting from the multimodal data, there are not really many relational databases uh, nowadays that support images and videos. And also if you look at the other way, so if you look at specialized systems, that should go in the relational way. So they're starting to add like a, what they call scalar queries, so pretty much a SQL support. Um, if you look at the integration with machine learning, Mainly what we see is that we are trying to re-implement some machine learning features inside SQL, or we are basically adding UDFs, so try to call into machine learning runtimes through UDFs within SQL. Um, related to hardware acceleration, as far as I know, most of the system, they basically only focus on one single stack, which is basically the NVIDIA stack, and they completely disregard all the other hardware vendors. And this, of course, kind of being Microsoft is not good for like, you know, uh, for the platform point of view, because we pay a lot more for the NVIDIA GPUs so this one. Um, let's do a step back now and look at a different class of systems. So uh, this is what I call, I call them like a tensor run times. I uh, think about them like a, the kind of, you know, well-known machine learning framework such as PyTorch, TensorFlow and, and so on. So if you look at them, they uh, support already multimodal data. Basically they have this nice tensor structure and they have a bunch of libraries such as Torch Vision, Torch Out, they just allow you to load all the different modalities into, into tensors uh, representation. Um, they have native support for hard uh, acceleration, and they're able to achieve this because there's really large open source community, and they have and hardware vendors are directly involved with these uh, large communities. Um, about the tight integration with machine learning frameworks, they basically have machine learning capabilities embedded directly into the system uh, and in the language itself. Think about automatic differentiation, for example. Uh, so the question that we ask is, can we build a database systems on top of test runtime so that we can basically achieve all these three uh, features that we want? Um, of course, the answer is yes, otherwise I won't be here. So I want to explain you in a reminder of the talk, um, kind of go over these three points and kind of explain a little bit what are the benefit of implementing a database on top of tensor runtimes. times. Um, so let's get started. So first of all, I want to kind of make sure that everyone is on the same page. So it is a tensor. Tensor is a multidimensional matrix and is pretty much the corner uh, data structure for uh, AI. Um, now I'm a database person, how can I map like a relational the data into, into tensor representation. So if you look, it's actually, this is actually quite easy. So if you look at a, a table as kind of in a columnar view, uh, if you have a numerical column that is pretty much is one vector, so it's one dimensional tensor. Uh, if you have um, a date column, you can convert as a timestamp. This is also a numerical, a numerical one dimensional tensor. If you look at, you can do the more naive things ever. So a number of records times like the maximum length of the strings, and that would be a two dimensional tensor. 
Um, then if you want to add Im images, that is basically a three-dimensional tensor. If you want to add an audio, it's a two-dimensional tensor, so on, so, so forth. So you got my point. Um, so in our system, what we do, we basically leverage Torch, Torch out the Torch video to load the, all the different entities into tensor representation. And since our query is uh, our system uh, and the query runtime is based on the tensor representation, we can basically run natively over all these modalities. Uh, what we did is actually with subclasses, the 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 tensor uh, the the tensor in PyTorch, we have what is called the encoding tensor because we want to kind of get close a little bit to columnar databases. So no one pretty much tried to use like plain encoded data in a columnar database. We tried to do lightweight encoding. So we tried to go in that direction. So we started to add additional encoding, uh, relevant encoding, bit packing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have these different classes of uh, encoding tensor now. Um, we added this probabilistic encoding tensor. And I will explain a little bit in a moment how does it work, but it's basically the type of encoder that allows us to go from, for instance, from images to some structure representation that we can feed into a SQL query. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a demo. Now we can do SQL on images. So I was supposed to do this live, but um, the connection is quite bad. So I recorded a video and I will try to talk over the video. Let's see if I can hit this. Uh, okay. All right, um, so we're gonna try to do some SQL over images and we have three steps here. So initial setup, and then we're gonna do some natural language query over SQL and top K image search. Um, the first things that we do is the, we import our system. So it's a kind of embedded uh, database. So you just do pip install and you kind of uh, access our feature. Then we import Torch, Torch Visual because we're dealing with images, a bunch of uh, machine learning uh, transformers models clip in this case. And then we use matplotlib because we want to kind of show, show the image as we go. Um, next, we're going to use Torch Vision to kind of load the data from, from disk into memory as, ten, as, a, uh, as, a, as a tensors. Uh, and we use the, the data loader class here. So we have a data folder that contains three subfolder with different type of images. So in the first subfolder, we have 50 kind of random, random images. Uh, the other subfolder, logos, we have 50 logos, and the next one is just 50 receipts. Uh, okay. Then uh, next, we're gonna show that kind of we can load the images and we can print the images in a notebook. Next, we're gonna uh, register the data loader into our database system and just give a name as a kind of attachments uh, table. Um, then we're gonna load the OpenAI pre-trained model. We use clip here that allow you to map uh, a natural language attack to images. Then we have a UDF, so we register UDF, we use kind of Pythonic way, so just an annotation on top of our Python, uh, Python uh, functions, and we provide the data type, so we have like a test query, and then images, it is a bunch of tensors, and what the UDF does, it just kind of, you know, return the score, given the text and images, it just return a score for that one. Okay, let's start with the query. So here we're gonna do use UDF to kind of uh, see, uh, filter all the receipt images. We just uh, are gonna count how many of them we have. So TQP works that we first compile a query and then we, we execute it. We can return in different format. In this case, we return a pandas data frame as a result. Uh, the result is 50, just because we have 50 receipts. Next, we're gonna have a more complicated query. We're gonna look for mountains uh, at night and we're gonna return the actual images. Uh, same thing, so we compile the query, we execute it. This time return a NumPy, uh, NumPy right? Uh, and we should have around uh, seven images. Uh, we just print one of them which is kind of close to, to mountains. Uh, for the top key one, we basically try to look for KFC receipt. So it's a limit order by query in this case. Um, and as you can imagine, we have a KFC receipt in our, in our data set. Uh, of course, we also change, it's just kind of, you know, is you can change whatever and put whatever you want there. So here I'm gonna change the natural text uh, uh, query and try to look for birds on the, on the beach. And of course we have an image with birds on the beach there. Okay. Okay, so let's move to point two, hardware acceleration. So uh, the platform that they're building, we call it Tensor Data Platform. And our idea is that we basically, we should be able to support like different modalities, as I show you, and different type of computation as well. So neural networks, classical machine learning models, such as decision trees, SQL, graph, et cetera, et cetera. So we're building a common Tensor Runtimes uh, library that is able to allow us to kind of go from the modalities and the different computation to Tensor Runtimes such as PyTorch. Our acceleration we can, it basically comes for free. So since we can kind of execute everything on PyTorch, 
uh, we basically can execute on any hardware that Python supports. So Python supports CPU, GPU execution on NVIDIA, AMD, M1 GPUs, TPUs, et cetera. So just by building a database like this, we can basically run query on any hardware supported by Python. Um, interesting things is 100% Python. Um, so this because just we've leveraged uh, PyTorch for doing the heavy lifting and the uh, efficiency uh, and stuff. Um, we haven't uh, uh, worked on all of these points. Uh, so we're mostly uh, focused uh, in, in the classical machine learning inference component. It's called a Diamond Bird. It's actually open source. You can go and play with it. And on the SQL component, which is called a uh, tensor query processor, uh, we presented it at VLDB last year. So I'm not gonna go too much in details there. What I want to point out is that the performance are quite, are quite good. Uh, so in this case, we run TPC, HSK factor 100 on an A100 GPU. We compared with the other CPU system, Spark, SQL Server, DuckDB, and the only GPU database that as far as I know is able to support TPCH. Um, this machine is a 32 core CPU machines uh, where we run these other systems. Uh, and we do kind of five warm up runs to, to warm up the caches, and then we do the median of the other five runs. And as you can see, the performance are, are quite competitive. So we're two order of magnitude faster than Spark. Okay. Uh, minor of the talk is actually what is more interesting and exciting for me uh, is the machine learning part. So we are able to basically uh, use SQL as a declarative language for a differentiable programming. So as you might know, uh, kind of gradients are the step one mechanism that allow you to learn uh, models. Um, and what we are able to do is um, basically test run times automatically exploit this um, uh, the gradients because they have this nice feature that's called the automatic differentiation. So you run the program and they compute the gradients for you. Um, in TDP, we try to exploit this. Um, we try to take it advantage of this automatic differentiation of PyTorch within, within SQL. So basically what we added is the concept of trainable user-defined function and table value function. And we also added um, differentiable implementation for some of the relational uh, operators, so filters, group by aggregation, et cetera. So let me uh, show you uh, how this uh, works through an example. So we call this trainable SQL queries. Um, uh, so these are basically SQL queries that, that mix together uh, uh, machine learning with relational operators. So let's assume that you want to do this kind of task. So we have images, an image with a bunch of numbers, and, and these numbers have different kind of sizes, smaller or, 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 or large. And what we want to compute is kind of the count of how many of these image and size that appears in the, in the um, uh, or the digits appear in the image. And you kind of think that you can express this as a SQL query in this way. You just do group by digit sides, and you do kind of a count on top. And use a, a TVF to kind of map the the images into something that the SQL is able to uh, uh, is able to understand. So let me explain a little bit how does this work internally. So we have our query, we have our image. Uh, we use the UDF uh, to basically uh, the UDF contains two CNN models. So one for the digit parsing and one for, one for the size parsing. This is actually kind of simple model. So basically, and and, if we, and these models allow it to go from kind of images to some tensor embedding that is able to under, to, to be understood by SQL. So. And this is kind of quite intuitive. So that basically means that the first number, 90% probability is a five, and the first number, 80% probability is large, okay? Then since our uh, uh, SQL engine is able to understand tensors, is able to understand this kind of encoding. So we, we added a, a soft implementation of some of the operators. So in this case, a soft group by and soft count. And they basically allow us to, to basically combine the neural network parts, all these uh, CNN things, with a database operation, it is able to do everything end-to-end -end differential. Um, if you want to do this in a pure natural kind of deep learning way, you basically will build a kind of a, a, a big neural network that is able to do all of this together. And this kind of adds several disadvantages. So you cannot, for instance, separate the kind of the digit classification and the size classification from the computation of the aggregate and the group by. Uh, you cannot generalize over different tasks because that is exactly the kind of CNN that you're building there. And, um, and basically, the near, neural network have to learn from scratch how to do kind of count in a group byte, which instead we know how to do it, right? Um, and as you might expect, the performance are quite better compared to a, a not, uh, just a neural network approach. And here we compare against a, just a, a CNN that has a similar number of uh, parameters as our uh, trainable query. It was compared with a, big, uh, a bigger um, CNN model uh, that has like around 11 million uh, uh, parameters. So uh, you can see we can train much, much faster. Just because basically we injected some, uh, some additional information on the 
um, thanks to the query, basically how to do group by and count, and the neural net only need to care about uh, learning how to do digits uh, and sides uh, um, extraction from images. Um, this also allow us to do uh, basically to express what in the literature is called as uh, neurosymbolic systems. And it's kind of a nice way because so far all the neurosymbolic literature is focused like prologue and that log that no one's want to use, as we all know. And this eventually will allow us to kind of make a little bit more, uh, you know, the neurosymbolic system a little bit more popular. Okay, uh, summary. Um, the space of AI uh, powered databases is eating up. Uh, this is pretty much because 80% of the data is a structure over there. So uh, and machine learning allowed to unlock all these kind of assets to this 80% of the data. Um, we think that AI centered database could be a leap forward in this direction. We, uh, we kind of piggyback on the billions of uh, dollars that have been poured into hardware and software for, uh, for AI. Uh, we added multimodal support. Uh, we do similar integration with the newest and bigger machine learning models. Uh, we also introduced some new query uh, paradigm that are kind of uh, interesting, such as uh, trainable queries. Uh, looking forward, there are many interesting things that we are exploring. One of them is that since we are building uh, a set of uh, database operators, we can basically build a TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow API on top. As you can imagine, this is basically a data frame API on top of our Tensor uh, runtime. And basically this allows you to surface all these features also to the Pandas user. So uh, we think that we can support, provide to Pandas users like GPU acceleration, differentiability, um, and multimodality as well. Uh, and we are a little bit exploring how these trainable queries can be used in the machine learning domain. One thing that we found is that, um, for instance, this learning from labor proportion is something that is used for in the, in the medical domain, where basically they learn not from a single record, but from back of records for like a privacy preserving. So uh, basically they, they tell you, they, you know, they get like 100 patients and they tell you like 30% of those they have high blood, high blood pressure, that is because they don't want to kind of know exactly which patient has high blood pressure. And you can imagine this as a kind of a simple aggregate uh, query with a machine learning model on top if you want to do prediction. Okay, we went a little bit too fast, but I hope that you understand what <laughs> I explained to you. Thank you very much. Great, thanks for the